right guys, welcome to the Texas Fly Fishing Report. It is Easter Sunday. So before we start, let me get you to open your hymnals. In this case, it's a Drake Magazine. It is the current issue of Drake Magazine. Open your hymnals to page 120. Uh-huh, oh, imagine that. Story by me, the original sinner is the name of the story. Great thing for Easter, huh? And if you get a chance, go pick that up at your local fly shop or newsstands, or hopefully you have a subscription. Drake Magazine, April 2019. Anyway, enough of my own tooting of my own horn. Here we go, we're on our way. It's gonna be a long one. Don't forget, you can always fast forward. You can go in slow motion if you want. I don't care. We got a lot of wind today. Hopefully you can put up with that while we get through the Texas Fly Fishing Report. It's been a while and there's a lot of reasons for that. I had to clean off all the debris from the fly bar here in Denton, Texas today. Spent most of my uh, morning cleaning all this off and trying to get it back from being pretty much devastated by the weather here. So we've had, and we have, a lot of wind. That causes problems for us. And rain and tornadoes and hail all these things go into what makes up just a wonderful atmosphere to fly fish in here in north texas i've got some stuff written down here let me go through it that way uh, we'll make sure we get to it all we've already seen in the our religious service today in drake magazine it is about the first person if you want to know what the story is about the first person that i could find the original guy who began to fly fish targeting carp on the best flats, the best water in a lake in Texas, in the whole state, right here about 11 miles north of me called Lake Ray Roberts. Lake Ray Roberts is a unique situation. I told you about in the past, feel free to go back and look at some other videos. Don't forget to subscribe to the Texas Flycaster YouTube channel. Now, in this report, Typically, this time of the year, we crank it up and we go from statewide to uh, hyper-local. And then if there's something else just off the, off the charts, we'll go there. So let's start with hyper-local. And I'm glad I put this broadcast off until Easter Sunday because I got a chance to go out yesterday when a, in a very narrow window and it wasn't windy. It was overrun with... Uh, some bass tournament or something going on. I don't know what it was. But anyway, it was overrun yesterday, but the wind was down. So what we saw, we, me, myself, and I, was a whole ton of carp. The best carp spawn I've seen in four years on the lake, Lake Ray Roberts. So it's the best spawn I've seen in a long time. A lot of that has to do with the water rising really quickly with all the big rains we had earlier in the week. Big, big rain. Water goes up, carp go in to spawn, and unfortunately the, the dam is so wide open that'll go down and that'll probably kill a lot of that row, a lot of those little little eggs, as it, but it will wash a lot of them out too. But regardless, the environment's perfect. Uh, they're totally in the height of spawning, which means that they're not in a high point of eating. Um, if you will contact me, either by phone number I'll put it right down there email or messaging on this uh, YouTube video I'll be glad to tell you more details about how you can get to these fish and catch them even during the spawn it's it's a much more technical much more difficult setup when they're in height of spawn but I caught two in two hours just messing around and it took me an hour and a half to figure out how to do it again because I'd forgotten so that's that's the life when you get old I'm not that old though. Managed to get two, one really nice one and one little boy. And those little boys are very excitable right now. So that's the micro right here in North Texas. That's what's going on. Temperatures are going up at night. Air temperatures, ambient temperatures, that means the lake water is going up in temperature. When we shift into, and there's a lot of gar on the flats too, tons, anywhere from four feet long down to 18 inches. Just covering up the the flats when you get down to, to the bass level that trash fish they call a, a largemouth bass there's like i said a tournament there yesterday on ray roberts 
If you take the state of Texas, it's a big state, so if you divide it horizontally into its latitudes, what you end up with is, is something different. About every 100 miles, like take a 100 mile band, and there's like six of them from where I am down to where I grew up, about six, six bands at 100 miles each. Within those bands, depending on the amount of rain um, and other situational things, the spawn is either over, coming to an end, or like here, it's, it's not coming to an end, but it's, it's, it's peaked, and it's just right off peak here in North Texas, north of Dallas-Fort Worth, along the Oklahoma border. It's a no man's land, really. But anyway, that's another story for another time. That is the medium level look on fresh water. So the spawn is over. You're gonna find carp in, in height of activity for the next month to two months. Um, there's a lot of variables like wind. And the only way to, to, to ensure success is to go do it. So you gotta do it. It's like playing the lottery. You can't win if you don't play. Believe me, I'm playing the lottery a lot right now. And the reason is, I just got back from the Florida Keys. I was there for on the ground for about four days. Wasn't worth it for uh, the drive. I drove, took my boat out there. This time it wasn't worth it. Um, we, I got there at the beginning of April, first day of April, and I was a fool. <laughs> Not really, but, but the thing is, and I'll do a video of it, it's all tourist video basically. There was no migration to see for me on the first week. Um, the guys that I was with are still there, and it's the 20th or 21st or whatever it is. What day is today, anyway? Let's see. It is the 20th. It looks like the, maybe 20, 21st. Today's 21st. And so 21 days later, they still haven't caught tarpon on the fly. They haven't seen a migration, and everybody's scratching their heads going, and they got a guide. They got a guide three days a week for the last three weeks and they have one more week of a guide three days and they one of them went to conventional and caught a couple of fish but there was none of that daisy chaining tarpon migration romantic stuff that you see on silver king none of that so the most interesting thing was that i really didn't know my geography on the florida keys and the way the keys swoop back like this they almost run east and west and so north or south wind determines which side of the of the actual keys you run on so the wind shifted from the south and i was actually in my little bitty boat on the atlantic ocean which is kind of weird to think about but that's how you do it very cool very cool place it's gonna i mean i caught uh pompano and i caught uh Oh, some other dinky fish, and there's barracuda everywhere. Saw a bonnet nose about four feet long. Saw a black tip. Chased my fly and nudged it. And I didn't know. I was when it got up to me, and it was five and a half feet long. I was like, oh, okay, I don't think I want that. But anyway, that's what happened in Florida. Very much a tourist trip for me. The only thing that makes it worth it, and will make it worth it. Is going back and doing it again because now I know a few things that will save me a lot of time and the one of them is not to not set aside two or three weeks instead of just one because four five days we're on the road one day it rained and it'll all find itself in the video I'm sure mostly a tourist video I'm sorry to disappoint you guys but that's the way it went okay that is that. The one part I've left off in the, the wider view, I was like, I, I was kind of going from a macro view to a little bit wider view of Texas. And now let's shift over to the Texas Gulf Coast. Temperatures and behaviors are changing there. The water temperatures are changing. Of course, with the winds here, these winds are actually reaching, they're not just here in North Texas, they're actually reaching the coast. So what happens is there's a very, um, the windows are, are not real wide open right now. This is April. So in my calendar, which everybody should keep a calendar if you're serious about patterning and, and learning about when to go fly fishing for next year. My calendar is a little 12 years old now. So obviously I get reminders every day about something that happened sometime. Last year in 2018, April was, was covered up with rain 
three full weeks out of four weeks of the month last year, all weekdays. Now we're getting a situation, unfortunately for my life, where <laughs> we're getting covered up on the weekends and it's, it's sunny during the week and raining on the weekends. So, that's problematic. When I can only fish on the weekends now, my schedule has been reversed. In case you didn't know, I'm a, I'm a gig economy person. Do lots of gigs and lots of different jobs so that I can come to you when I can, as I can, and bring you these stories and go fly fishing and things like that. Love bringing these stories. If you got any ideas, let me know. Don't forget the website, www.texasflycaster.com. A lot, of, a lot of what I wrote here was based on that trip to Florida because it took up such a huge part of my life. It was a great learning experience. Um, let me just tell you a couple of things. There's a, um, a lot of people in Florida. It's a very, very crowded state. So when you go to Florida, don't, don't expect to be alone, especially when the fish are biting. One thing I did see in the weekdays that I was there was that there was nobody fishing so that tells me that there was probably not a lot of fish although they say that the place I didn't stay for a, through a weekend so I would assume that um, and then what they say locally is it turns into a zoo on the weekend one of the things you don't want to spend any money on and you can just ask me I'll tell you what everybody's all the different formulas I've got is leaders for tarpon there's so many different ideas, but there's some really simple ideas that um, will work better than any formula tied leader that they're going to stick you for locally there in Florida. And it's a stick job. So don't do that. Don't tie your leaders. Let, contact me, and then I'll tell you about what, what to do on the first phase and then the second phase and the third phase of a, a successful trip uh, for tarpon in Florida. All that said, seeing, seeing people feed tarpon at this one place I went to, touristy man, touristy. Um, seeing those guys uh, up close at the size they are, it makes me want to see one in Texas really bad and get a, and catch one in Texas. So that's on my mind a lot. Can you blame me? But I'm getting out ahead of myself. We have great carp fishing going starting in about a week. It may be less than a week before they start eating off the spawn. There's an event going on. Let me find it because I've got some time here. Let me find it. It's down in uh, Rockport. It's an art event. It's coming up in May. And I want you guys to meet me there if you can. I think I'm going to make this one. I'll be in Central Texas this coming weekend. The next weekend after Easter, I will be down in Bernie, Texas for a day. If you're, if you're down there fly fishing, let me know where you're at and I could join you maybe on the front side or the back side of that trip to uh, Bernie next weekend. I'll be flying solo as usual and I'm looking for a place to weather line down near Bernie Fredericksburg. Let me find this one event I want to let you guys know about because you know if you check out the website www.texasflycaster.com you will know that I do a lot of articles on music and art and there is an event in Rockport Rockport and it's called the Rockport Art Festival that just popped up right away let's see I think I've got it let's see if I've got the right date I'm going off of the zap website which is where people who want to actually be in these go this is 2019, there's uh, the event dates. It's in July, I thought it was in May. So this is, this is a good one, but it's in July 6th through, and July 7th. There must be another one that I'm thinking of. Let's see, um, how about a uh, one in Port Aransas? All right, it's popped on the art festival, Puerto Rico's art festival, 2019. All right, maybe it's that one. Ah, that's it. It's next weekend. It's it is no. I think it's no. There's there's two of them. There's Texas Sand Fest on April 26th, but this is Puerto Rico's art fest. It is on May 25th 
down in Port Aransas, Texas, and I think I want to try and make that one. It looks like a really interesting event, although the Rockport one has a better reputation. So make sure you get out, and if you're near the, if you want to get to Salt, that is on May 25th and May 26th, Saturday and Sunday. I like the sound of that. I know I've got a wedding to go to around that time though so we'll see how this all, all plays out I may not get to that one either okay thanks for watching guys I'm glad to finally catch up with you and of course remember to check out the website www.texasflycaster.com take care of yourself stay out of the wind my gosh it's so windy I think it's gonna blow my laptop off the fly bar I will be having fly tying here at the fly bar if you're in the North Texas area Every Wednesday night from now through the summertime, if I'm in town, we're going to tie flies here at the fly bar on Wednesday night. Make sure you give me a call, 940-380-0408. And, oh, I just said it, but there it is on the bottom. But give me a call. Let me know you're coming. If you, nobody comes, then I'll just sit here and tie flies by myself and just entertain myself like I normally do. And, <coughs> One of the ways I entertain others and myself here is this is a bar, but it's not a uh, it's not a uh, sales bar. I just keep your beer cold until you get here. So when you get here, you never know what you're gonna find. I might make some fajitas, real Grand Valley style, or we'll just have a liquid uh, refreshment, maybe a beer that I found. I had some Yingling here the other day. I picked up Yingling when I was in Florida. Good stuff. The Yingling beer is good. Or it could even be one of these crazy Colorado sissy beers like Fat Tire. And no, I'm just kidding. Fat Tire is a good beer. You just never know what you're going to get. Life at the Fly Bar is like a box of chocolates. Thanks for watching. You guys have a great rest of April. Call me. Email me if you want to set up a time to go fly fish for carp. I do guide for carp on Lake Ray Roberts in North Texas. And I will be trailing to some other nearby lakes also during the height of this spawn to see what I can find there. Thanks for watching. We'll see you guys later.